Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Plus Three Futures and Commodities Show. My name is Ben Maldonado, and as always, I'm here with Barry Hederachi. Hey, Barry, how are you? Doing pretty well, doing pretty well. It's kind of exciting. My, I, I'm super excited after having reviewed the charts because stuff is moving, things are happening, cycles are kicking in, and markets are responding. So it is... Uh, it's trading season. Things are uh, things are moving. I agree. Yeah, even the um, yeah commodities. Everything's uh, starting to perk up a bit after a couple of weeks, weeks and weeks of sort of uh, sitting around, right? Absolutely. The um, I mean, you and I were talking about this for the last few weeks. Like eighty percent of the time, these commodity markets are you know going sideways, chopping, not not trending, and it looks like a lot of them are breaking out of those those consolidations and you know we'll review the the ones today that are super important but let's start with bitcoin uh mm -hmm. bitcoin made a new all-time high this past week and wouldn't you know it's right where we'd expect it to be which is on the half square right uh, where we called it out <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly right i mean that's the that's the key thing about these squares i was i was explaining it to my uh my college roommate last night who's an orthopedic surgeon he's like you know how do you do this stuff i listened to your show and i really didn't understand it but i can see that it works mm -hmm. and i said well just if you look at the squares as just a way to define sort of an unlimited possibility where you're looking at the market where price can do anything all we're doing when we put these squares on the chart is is creating places where probabilities start to happen that that one thing over another is more likely to happen and that's all we're doing is we're we're creating a grid and places where we can say hey this is more likely to happen than that you well, know we're, we're, lots. exactly and you know basically we're adding a frame frame mm -hmm. of reference what, what I'd like to call it right mm -hmm. And once you have a frame of reference, then you can easily figure out the patterns within that and the probabilities, like you say. Exactly. So calling that out, yes, you know, we're it makes us look like gurus and all, but really we're just looking at, okay, well, the odds were when we were down here and staying on top of here that we were going to go to here. And, and right. of course, we went to there. Now that we're there, if we can't get above, you know, the odds are we're either going to chop in here or come down and test this, this lower rail. Right. Um, and by the way, all the levels for, for all the charts here, plus all the, the markets we cover are on a spreadsheet, which we'll post the link to later when we, when we post the link to the video. Um, and please, if you like the content, make sure you subscribe, like, hit the bell, comment, do all the things that, uh, that YouTube wants, because it's, uh, it's the only way we get feedback for, you know, are we doing, what are we doing correctly? What, what should we change? What should we add? You know, so please, please do that for us. So anyway, back to Bitcoin. So we, we, we stopped where we expected. We pulled back right into the middle of this sort of this half square. And, and what, I, what I'd like to point out, and, and we were talking about this, Barry, as long as we stay above this full square in this, you know, 59.6 area, I think it's bullish. I think you can, you can, you know, say that the probabilities are we're going to go higher still. But if we lose this level, I think you got to watch out for a pretty sharp and, and potentially scary correction in Bitcoin. Uh, so for me, this is the key key spot. You know, there's there's some other things that we look at that are you know putting an amber light on this thing. But as long as we're above this, we're okay. If we get below that and get stuck under it, you know, be careful with Bitcoin. And it could still but, make one more run up, and you got that little triangle working up there. Mm hmm. Yeah, so, let's let's draw that in. And that's a fairly clean, clean setup, right? Yep. So it could push into this apex for sure. Exactly. Um, but, you know, again, is if you're looking at places to, you know, where you can make decisions and where you can have probabilities to assign to it up here, we got to get above that to make make headway going higher here if we stay on top of this it's okay and bullish if we get below it uh be careful with longs because you know i think you're looking at the half square and maybe a full square retrace if we lose that's that. sixty thousand, and then the other one uh what 67 68 
up above? Up here? Yeah. Where it's about um, yeah, 68.4, 68.5 in that area. Mm -hmm. And again, if you check the spreadsheet, all the numbers, the exact numbers are in there. So Very watch nice. your Bitcoin, watch your levels and uh, trade away on that one. Uh, let's uh, shoot it over to you and you can go over uh, the markets that, uh, that you cover and tell us what you see. All right, let's do it. There's the E-mini right at resistance, huh? Right at the level we called out last week. Yeah. That 4560 level you called out, it would look to be pretty, pretty key. Right. And then the 4693 was the one for this week. Mm -hmm. Watch. Well, the correction, the pullback last week, the, um, the low was right on the 50% of the square of 90, which mm -hmm. is very bullish. Just to uh, pick up from last week, we talked about 40, I did say 46, didn't I? Mm -hmm. There we go. And, and that's where pretty much we, you know, we tried to get above that. We tried a couple of times and failed. And we came right back into the, um, into the 50% of the square. So mm -hmm. I think going into next week, this 43.93 hasn't changed much. We're going to use that as sort of the uh, balance point. 46.93. 46.93. Yeah. Yeah. Let me get the numbers right. <laughs> <laughs> so we came into support and we're rallying back up. 46.93 is a key level to watch uh, as a balance point, meaning that, you know, softer conditions below and, and stronger ones we can settle above it, which we didn't do. You know, we haven't done all these, the, the three days we have up here that we tangled with um, the level was just, we really didn't settle above. We were just kind of in it, testing that, testing that level. So I would say um, that's going to continue to be a key level to watch. And let's go on to the weekly. It's interesting you have 4693, because I was saying until we settle above 4700, you know, you gotta gotta still say that the the balance is to the downside for more, con, you know, consolidation, chop, correction, whatever's gonna come. So we're in the so we're in a similar neighborhood there. Yeah, I think we're in a kind of a correctional, um, what would you call it, correctional window? Mm -hmm. Because I was looking at the um, the calendar day chart that we looked at that you know I don't keep track of, and we're not quite uh, well. What I noticed was we looked at the 36 when we got up to here and we had mm -hmm. a little bit of a reaction. And you can see um, we have a 45 count coming up next week, right around the 17th. Mm -hmm. So I would say 17, 18, 19 is sort of a window. <clears throat> and it's not a window to be sort of um, ignored because it's, it's a 45 day run off this October low. Right. And you know, we have 45 day blow offs are very common and a bunch of stocks have the exact same pattern. So I think uh, some of those are going to expire at a 45 day count. And these are sort of blow off moves that finish up legs. Again, they don't happen every day. Obviously, this 45 calendar day count is uh, it can only happen once here. So 36 is interesting because we do a lot of 36s and the next one up is 45. And after 45, there really isn't any uh, far as blow-offs go until we get to at least 60 and, and then maybe a 90. So <clears throat> next week is, uh, towards the end of next week is going to be critical, this uh, 17, 18, 19 timeframe, mainly because we're making a 45-day run um, up into a high, especially if we get into a high. Mm -hmm. And using... S&P as a proxy, you know, here, but if you go and look at in, a lot of individual stocks, they're all running the same 45 um, day cycle. So because of that, I would say we really have to watch it. And if we can't get above 93 or if we get above 93, then can't hold above it. That's going to show that weakness going into that blow off high. And that's a nice way to bracket that uh, potential cycle high of that 45 cycle. Uh, going into next week. So is that, was that clear enough? Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So towards the end of next week is what we have to watch. And I'll post updates to this on Twitter. So you guys can follow through. Moving on to the bonds. Um, we left off last week talking about a test of the, um, 
of the range. And we pretty much got exact to the halfway of that range um, and, 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 uh, and failed. So now I think uh, really the, the bracket to watch would be 160.20 would be support, key support. And then to the upside is 164.26 is, uh, is resistance. And we'll have to see what happens next week. Probably go and test 160.20 and, and that's going to be the key component if we're going to be able to consolidate above that and, and, and sort of mount another run up. Mm-hmm. Or if you fail, so I, I see that as a make, uh, make or break line. It's one sixty twenty, and looking at the uh, weekly bonds, pretty much. Um, well, you know, we did a sort of a false break up here through that through that line, <clears throat> mm-hmm. but we're still in this range. You know, it, it, we really haven't. You know, we're not having any huge any kind of a big run. But what we should keep in mind is we do have good support around one fifty eight twenty basis the weekly chart 158.28 so figure 159 and that's the half square so long as we were above that uh, you know the odds are to the uh, odds favor more upside mm-hmm. so at that for now you want you have anything to add to bonds i'm going to cover bonds too because i i agree with you i think it, as long as we can make a higher low Mm-hmm. Then the, the 11, okay, right. 12 low. Yeah, there's mm-hmm. a there's a potential for a, a good good push higher. Next would be crude and crude. But the last three four weeks we've talked about the square that showed up and warned about a possible pullback or consolidation uh, under it, and which we've done. And going into next week, really the key support would be seventy seven. And. To gain some strength, we have to hold above 82. That's really the number we're looking at. If we can hold above 82, basically, I think we can take the square out. And the fact that we haven't really sold off but are consolidating right below the square, I think we went into this last week a little bit about market character and behavior mm-hmm. after squaring out. And um, so being that we're, we haven't really sold off, we're holding a fairly tight range uh, is bullish. So let's watch that. But up up until you know the market can prove that, which would be in my in you know my opinion, being able to hold above eighty two, uh, I think it could be uh, continued sideways as long as it's between eighty two and seventy seven. Right. Even that seventy seven doesn't go, you know, then it'll be a whole other story. So. And you're also consolidating above those July highs, which is bullish. Right here, yeah, exactly, mm-hmm. and that's pretty much where seventy-seven is. So they all line up. It's just in theta burn territory for those of us that live the life of the options trader. Right, right, and it's a good time. I saw some people were writing, uh, putting on some credit spreads, so mm-hmm. maybe they saw the same consolidation coming in a different way. Sure. Uh, looking at the weekly, again, we looked talked about the square. Uh, some three, four weeks ago as it was coming up and and we were talking about that being major resistance, which it has been so far. Again, you know, it's holding fairly tight, no, no big sell-off. It's the tightest uh, consolidation so far on the entire leg up. So that's, to me, that that's bullish, even though there is a, there is a square that uh, expired at the high. And mm-hmm. the way to manage that would be to... Um, watch these levels. So that's why 82 and 77 are key levels for next week. And of course, if we had managed to um, hold above 82 and take out these highs, then 91 is the next resistance that we have, that I have. Gold, ah, what a story, eh? Beautiful. Well, I remember when it was at 1765. <laughs> we talked about <laughs> it being key support and, and, and looking, we were both uh, very bullish looking for a bounce and, and, and there it was. Uh, we got the break, and now um, really the resistance, next resistance, um, and of course I focus more on the shorter legs, and Ben, I know you look at the longer period, so mm-hmm. for me, the uh, next resistance, you know, really the key would be around 1915, which lines up with the old high in May, uh, but starting around 1887, so 1887 to 1915 is when you want to watch your uh, positions, long positions, and see what's happening and 
And interestingly, right about there is when the uh, midpoint of the fork sort of comes into the picture. So all that is setting up. So far, it looks good. Look at your higher lows going into that. That's the clue always, right? Exactly. Exactly. That's what we're looking for the break there. It's subtle, but not a lot of people pick up on that. If your other things line up and you can see those higher lows, it's it's clues to what the big money's doing. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Not just, you know, every market does the same thing. So it's easy mm -hmm. to track if once you're onto it. Yeah, I would say 1832 is a level to watch for support. If it comes back, it really needs to, clearly, it needs to hold above that. Yeah. And if it can, then I think uh, 1915 would be the next uh, next break to the upside. Mm -hmm. Take a quick look at the weekly just to, um, yeah, we had that triangle set up uh, a couple of weeks ago and we just a nice clean break, exactly what we want to see. And the upper, the other triangle line that we set up is right around, um, you know, 1897, 18, 1890. Mm -hmm. 98 right in there so we have plenty of um, room to go but that that break looks good it's been coiling up for weeks and weeks as you can see on i think we talked about this a couple of weeks ago on on the square of 52 we made a full square weekly square and now we're back at the uh 50 of the square so this is the next sort of the sticky point this eight, 1878 area we really need to clear that and that is also where that upper line comes in. So to me, this is the area to clear. And, and if we can clear that, then the upside is, um, you know, we have, your we have full square, square, right? Uh, well, yeah, we can have full square and maybe even more, but we, we definitely open up that entire uh, upper half square. Mm -hmm. e level to watches would be that, this um, zone here with 1878 being sort of the center point. All right. But the square looks good. I, I can't imagine this being another false break, you know, like going up to here and coming all the way back down to continue the triangle. <laughs> right, right. Uh, it's just Unlikely. Seems, yeah, yeah, it looks uh, good. And there's a good ABC targets up there. We'll talk about that as we, as we move. Dollar, um, well, the dollar pretty much, again, you know, we've been bullish well, we've been nothing but bullish, right? <laughs> For, yeah, that's correct. As far as I can remember. Yeah. So uh, the last part was, you know, we came and tested the trend line and uh, we drew this little other line in. We were looking for it to go up and test the half square, and which is exactly what it was doing by the end of last week. So now it's really a matter, you know, this 95, and we've been talking about 95 forever. So now that we're here, I think it's possible that we correct back a little bit, maybe, you know, back and fill a bit but the next stage really has to be one once we can clear 95 this 95 10 level looking at the weekly chart for the dollar i would say you know five eighths of a square is a key level uh gan talked about that and people that use squares uh, know that and we're really at five eighths here we did manage to clear the halfway it took a while and now we're at five eighths so you have to watch it. If we can clear five A's, then we're really on the way, uh, you know, much higher. But for now, uh, and the break looks very strong, right? Remember the channel line that we drew in and we broke above it. And we stalled exactly at the five eights line. So let's see what we can do. For now, I'm looking, I'm expecting a little bit of a, probably a pause up here around 95, 95, 10 or so. And, and once we can clear that, then this channel will probably end up becoming a lower channel for the next leg. Anything you want to add to that, Ben? No, I think it looks good. <clears throat> the dollar's strong. It's just we're at a we're at another decision point. We have to just see what price tells us here. Yeah. So it's hitting some resistance for now. And those are the levels. So see how that goes. Uh, next we have the euro, which is of course doing the opposite. And last week we talked about how important this 15, um, 15, 60 level would be and that's 72 down from the high and we i think we even joked about how he's just barely hanging on and that's pretty much yeah. right, right it just you know tried to get up there and then completely failed and failed hard and so uh i mean look how good that level is when it gave way look at the bar yeah. compared to all the previous bars exactly this time was it right mm -hmm. 
And also before that, you can see how it, you know, ran up to the uh, bottom of the consolidation, and just failed to get through. Yeah. And, and yep. Just, just weakness. So I'm, I'm seeing weakness. I don't see a lot of uh, support here, at least till we get down into, you know, around uh, 1380 or so. Mm -hmm. uh, but it doesn't mean, you know, normally when you break through a square, it's normal for you to go back and, you know, retest that counter trend into that area before selling off again. But no matter what, it's in a weak uh, position below 1560. So that's that's the bottom line there. And lastly, we have the weekly euro. Again, <clears throat> we've dropped this line a few weeks ago, uh, calling that uh, resistance, and it seemed it worked out fairly well. The key level we were watching on the weekly was this half square coming off the low in 2020. And you can see we sat there for a month <clears throat> testing it, and eventually you broke out. So breaking out on a weekly key support level, you know, it's rare that we just rally off of that. So I'm, I'm looking, I think it's going to continue to be soft below this uh, 1520 actually on a weekly basis. So that's the key level to watch 1520. You know, we should uh, slowly trade lower or maybe even faster. <laughs> we'll you know, this is a great example with the strength in the dollar that we've seen this year and, you know, showing up in the charts is how the, the narrative or the, the sort of the common uh, wisdom out there, the collective wisdom out there of, oh, the dollar's got to be weak because we're running huge deficits, the Fed's printing money, the dollar's mm -hmm. going down, and look what it's done this year. It's, uh, it's a perfect example of how you get misdirected if you just follow the headlines. Exactly. And that's why, you know, technicals really, I mean, without technicals, I don't know what we'd do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Only way to be sane, right? Stay sane, and and sometimes the stories, uh, <laughs> sometimes the stories back you up, sometimes they don't. So, right. But technicals are always neutral. Mm -hmm. Well, that's all I have for this week. Let me put it back to you. Cover the commodities. Excellent. Nasdaq's looking, uh, looking pretty good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's hanging in there. I mean, what? What I've done, similar to your uh, your ES chart, right? We went up and we tested this full square here, three four days. Tried to you know probe it, see if we could get above it. Just couldn't do it. Had the first move down. I put a trend line in now because we reversed up. The key is going to be what happens if we get up here, right? If we get to this you know sixteen three fifty three forty area, can we get above it? If we can get above it, you know you're looking at new highs. If we can't. Um, you know, I've drawn in a, just an ABC target down here, which interestingly, if we, if we, let me pull it up a little bit. Not, if we do, let's say we fail up here, look at where the ABC would target, not only the half square, but right on top of the highs from August, mm -hmm. September. Well, you know, it's possible we counter trend up into this 18, 19 um, area uh, into that time. Right. Yeah. I mean, look at the full square timing here, yeah, November 17th. Yeah, 17, 18, yeah. yeah. I think that three-day window there is key for next week. And if we rally up there, you can't take out the high. It sets up a nice lower high. So Yeah, yeah. In mind. So if, if we do get the lower high in reverse, minimally we should do an ABC. It has potential, obviously, to be something bigger. But let's first see what happens when, you know, when this counter trend ends you know, and where it ends. We had a nice, mm -hmm. nice bar on Friday, but let's see, let's see what happens when we get in that resistance area. So um, anything else to add on NASDAQ? No, just your square level uh, above. So we, what's your full square that's right up above? Yeah. Yeah. Here you're, so you're talking about that 16, 342, 16, 340, 16, 350 area. Got it. Okay. That's good. That's key. Mm-hmm. So here's the 30 year. Uh, I'm pointing out the 30 year. Barry reviewed the 30 year. One of the things that that I noticed in in um, in looking at this is we've had this this nice channel on the, to the upside with a series of higher lows. We did fail at the full square here, which you know Barry showed, and pull, and we've pulled back. <clears throat> what I, why I'm showing this is if we can reverse here. And if we hold this low 
uh, and, and reverse, you know, we challenge the full square here and get going. There's a, there's a potential for a nice rally coming out of this spot. Um, I don't think it's, it's huge odds in your favor that it's going to work yet. We need more information on price data. You know, we want to see a reversal here off of this. With this low holding, we want to see reverse up and then take this out. But I wanted to show it because the setup is there with a potential for, you know, a decent fast type move uh, if we can clear this full square. And the full square for me is in around the 63, 17, 63, 18 area. Mm-hmm. So, and again, all these numbers and, and levels are on the, uh, the spreadsheet. Please make sure if you, if you enjoy the content and you find it useful, you, you like and subscribe and hit the bell and all that on YouTube. Hey, Ben, I, I just saw a uh, pretty classic pattern here. If you connect the two uh, September lows right there. Low to low. I see. Here to here. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll draw that out. Right. You see that apex? Yep. Okay. So normally if, you know, if a market breaks down and comes back to the apex and sells off, that usually is, is very bearish. That's why it's a good point to, it's a good place to sell the, you know, to get on a sell position. True. Uh, which is in this case happens to be exactly on your square. Yep. Right. That see mm-hmm. where the two lines cross. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Yeah. Right here. Right. Yep. Now, if we, if it doesn't sell off and we go back and take that out, that's very bullish. So I think when you were talking about that, it reminded me of, uh, hey, that pattern's in place. So if we take it out, it's probably going to run. There's no question this is the key level, right? The now we have another, you know, it's like another piece of evidence, right? Yeah, the 63.17, 63.18 is key. Mm-hmm. So first we have to hold this low, right, and reverse up. And then then we have to beat this. So that's why I say it's not... There's, there's no high probability trade set up yet. I just wanted to show how it's developing. And this week, you know, we should get some more information that tells us, you know, which way is the highest probability. And that oh. apex trade is usually, it's bearish till it's taken out. Then it, it kind of turns very bullish. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. good point. Next one we want to look at is, is wheat. Uh, mm-hmm. last, <laughs> last few weeks, we've been highlighting the grains. And we had a fantastic week in, um, in the grains, including wheat. And wheat has just, I mean, as you can see from the chart, it's been a stellar performer. I mean, from the, the June, June slash July lows in 2020, it's just been a nice, steady grind higher. And it's picking up momentum. And you can see that from the slope of these trend lines. You know, this shows you momentum is picking up. We could even draw another one in here, and it's even ratcheting up more. Um, the reason I'm showing wheat is the high came in near resistance, you know, which is this full square here up around, you know, 829, 830. And, and much like Barry showed with, uh, with crude oil, we had some very important square outs here. You can see from a timing standpoint, there's the half square. And obviously, we made the full square in price. So what, what I'm interested in doing now and, and I'm on alert for is what's going to be the reaction off of this? Is it going to be a chop sideways? Are we going to get a sharp pullback? Um, I'm inclined based upon the the strength we saw going in here and how it has just been, you know, while the other grains, which you'll see corrected for the last, you know, eight, nine months, six, eight months, this thing's been strong. I'm, I'm inclined to think it's going to be more of a chop and a consolidation but we have to let the market show us and the market tell us. So I'm aware of where we are, you know, time and price here. Um, if you have a wasting asset like an option where there's a time decay, you know, you need to be concerned that, you know, if we, if we even if we're not weak price-wise, if we just chop around, that's not going to help your option. So uh, I just wanted to point, point this out, show it you know, in real time before it starts happening. And, and let's see how this, this square resolves and this high resolves. Uh, anything to add to that, Barry? I know this is something you always look for. Well, I think that's a good assessment. Um, and there are a lot of uh, small squares and, and time cycles expiring right in here. So it's a thing to watch. The, I think to the upside, you really want to see if we can clear 827 
which I think is pretty much uh, at your square there. That's and, right. Yeah. And if we can clear 827 in that area, I think then we're in good shape, which should get us into the next square up. So as long as we're below that, what you say applies, you know, obviously it, it's consolidation or correction mode. Exactly. So that's we. It's been a terrific performer for us. We're super happy with it. Just sort of keeping an eye on it because of these uh, these price and time relationships that we have here. Did you see these on the weekly too, or just the daily? Weekly is pretty well set, right? This is more of a minor thing you're talking about here. Yeah, there was there was a square on the uh, on the weekly from uh, late June of 2020. So it, it's it's something to 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 be concerned about in terms of watching and seeing what, what kind of reaction we get, if any, I mean, like you said, if we can go up and take out that high, there's no, no worries, right. We're, we're exactly. just continuing to run, but it's definitely on the radar watching this week to see, you know, if there's any significant reaction. Very good. Here's corn. Now, as you can see, the pattern in corn is very different than the pattern in wheat, right? We had a, we, Wheat was basically just a nice steady grind higher this whole time here uh, from, from June of 2020 all the way to present. We made a high in April in corn, you know, sharp move up and a high. And we've had a pretty significant pullback both in time and price. You know, we've come down basically three squares. And now we're making progress here. We broke out of this downtrend. Uh, we had this false break here, made a higher low, another higher low. We're coming up to the top of the square. So corn is looking, continuing to look bullish. Um, we need to take this level out uh, if we're going to see, you know, continued progress to the upside. And that's around uh, 590. Uh, that's, that's the next key level to the upside. I like the way it's acting. I like all the the places it's turning, you know, you can see we found support here on the half square. We found support here on the full square. So corn looks bullish. Uh, we're watching the next level, important level we're watching is this 590 level to, to see if we can clear that. Um, anything else you have to add on corn, Barry? Um, I think you covered it well. We still kind of have a sort of a shadow of what's happening in wheat, happening in uh, corn uh, far as squares go, like, from last year's lows, mm -hmm. uh, April lows at least, I think we're, what do we, um, uh, we're running 405 days. So that's 360 mm -hmm. uh, plus 45. So four square and a half. And from the high that we have in May, we're running 135 days. And this is lining up next week. So that's something to watch. It's possible that we, have some kind of a correction off of that. Sure. But the other side of the flip side of that is if we continue higher through that kind of a cycle, then, you know, upside is wide open again. Absolutely. We can go yeah. challenge this, not only the full square, but that trend line, that downtrend line from those two highs earlier exactly. this year. Yep. So let's see, corn is uh, looking good, but again, because they're, these grains are cousins. You get, when when one squares out, you got to look for the others, and there's also time relationships there. So we're watching that as well. Here's the laggard of the group, which is soybeans. But even the laggard is is showing some some decent price action here the last few days this week. Uh, what we had here, which was very interesting, at the half square, we had a nice low came in, got the first reaction up, then we saw this weakness. And just like they do in most markets at big turns, there's a false break at the low. So you get a false break at the low at our half square support. That's usually a very good low to trade off of, a good low to use as an anchor that, hey, maybe something ended here. And we do have some time counts and price relationships where something ended there. What I wanted to see, the first thing you have to see when you get that is, can you get over the next resistance level. Well, the next resistance was at, at 1240. We closed at 1243. So we're not way above it. It's still sort of in the vicinity. It still could drop down next week below that. So I'm watching this area here. Can we stay above 1240? Can we push and then come back and sit on top? If we can, can we take out this previous high here? 
you know, from earlier in October around 1267. A lot of work for beans to do, but it's starting to show signs that uh, this low looks like a good low. Um, anything else you have to add on beans, Barry? Uh, no, I think that sums it up well. Yeah, so we're watching the levels, uh, seeing how price acts. But I tell you what, though, looking at the uh, trend line and the, squ the square setup, the, the move could be explosive, right? It could catch up very quickly. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And which is why I want to highlight it, because, the, mm -hmm. you know, you're, if, if we catch this corner and it's a good low, the move out of here could be really, really uh, profitable. Right. As Barry covered gold a little bit, I just wanted to show my view on gold because uh, this was one of my favorite commodity charts last week. It looked poised to go and, and it did. Uh, as you can see, the, what we, what we, this pattern that you'll see in a lot of these commodities that when they're consolidating before they break out. And remember, this thing's been going sideways to down since August of 2020. So it's basically been wearing out all the bulls, just grinding lower, grinding lower. Every time it, it looks like it's done, it comes back and makes a lower low. <laughs> well, we stopped making lower lows here this year in August. Higher low, higher low, higher low, and then there you go. So it, it's just something to look for when you're looking at these charts. Look for these patterns and then start looking for other evidence that may support the fact that these higher lows are coming in after a period of, you know, lower lows and lower highs, because uh, then you can catch this kind of move. Key level, as Barry said, is this 1834, 1835 area. As long as we stay on top of that, you know, we have the, the half square certainly is open, uh, which is about 1925. And then after that, you get the full square up around 2000. So gold looks good. Uh, even with the move last week, it still looks actionable. Gold's little brother is silver, and silver actually uh, is is looking very bullish. Um, this is this one had more of a sideways correction from the the whole August, the previous to high in August of last year in 2020. You can see it's mm -hmm. mainly been sideways. We had this clear out low, took out this low, took out this low, took out this low right on support and we've since you know turned the thing i like about the pattern here is we got above the square came back and tested the square could not get below it and now we've moved back up and surpassed the half square that's what bullish markets do and a abcd would take you right to the top of the uh, next square <laughs> yeah which is around 26 26 and change 2660 yeah. right up here mm-hmm and that's the next target, right? Because look at, look at Friday's bar. Remember, we talked about this on previous shows. When the low stays on top of the bar, on top of the either half square or full square, it's bullish. Right. We've got that set up here again. So uh, silver looks good for higher prices. Here's one that's been frustrating traders. Uh, and you can see why since, you know, since the May high, it's basically been chopping around in a pretty wide range. The reason I'm highlighting it is this, this looks like one of those patterns where the upside is ready to be realized and it's ready to, ready to go. Um, first, you can see the series of higher lows that led to this spike that went right up to the top of the square. We pulled back sharply right back to the, to the bottom of the square. And now we're starting to move up again. And if you look on a, you can see it kind of here on the daily, but if you go to a four hour or 60 minute, you'll see these higher lows coming in. Uh, you know, every time it pulls back, somebody's buying at a higher level. Uh, so there's accumulation going on. Copper looks poised, you know, whether it's this week, next week, in a month, it, it's, it's getting ready for a move higher. Uh, so, the other thing I want to point out, and I, I show this a lot, if you look where these lows have come in, it's just on top of the February highs. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's nothing really bearish about this chart yet. If we get stuck under here, then we have to start, you know, taking a different approach and saying, you know, the odds are going to favor that we're going down. But because it can't and hasn't been able to get under here yet and stay under, um, Odds are we're going to push up to this half square 
uh, and the half square is in the 457, 458 area. And then once that's cleared, it's back up here and challenging the all-time highs. So let's watch that. Mm -hmm. Anything you have to add on copper? I think that it, it, I think you're right. If we can break that high, high, high from Friday, I think um, upside opens up, at yeah. least from the pattern. Yep, it's accumulation pattern. Mm -hmm. Here we have another great performer last week that we talked about coffee. Uh, this thing is. Boy, have we talked about coffee for a couple of weeks? <laughs> yeah. All being bullish, bulled up, and nothing happening, right? Right, frustrating everybody. You know, since the July highs, it's just been doing a bunch of nothing. Uh, chopping up and chopping down and going nowhere but then you get this pattern and again we you know i hate to be a broken record but when you start seeing these higher lows this this the odds that of this happening go, go up dramatically and we got that's friday's bar we had this big move up on friday uh interestingly again the the lows of the previous day stayed on the half square couldn't get below it didn't push dramatically below it the low on friday again was on the half square and then boom there you get the move uh coffee looks good um this is an important breakout wouldn't be surprised you know if we get a retest back here uh but a lot of times when, when these commodities run man they, they don't give you that chance to come back if it does and it holds above it it's obviously bullish um, but the targets here on um, on coffee are looking like 235, 244, 259. Um, so coffee looks bullish. Remember the pattern. These kind of patterns repeat in other uh, in other commodities. Here's one that I want to highlight: sugar. And hopefully you can see it's creating a similar pattern to coffee right before coffee ripped. And I don't even need to have you use your imagination. Let's go back here and look at the April to June, July period. Range bound, range bound, range bound, right? Hits the top of the range, comes to the bottom, top of the range, bottom, top of the range, back to the bottom. But what, what started happening near here, the end of the range? Low, higher, low, mm -hmm. higher, low, boom. You start to get, you get this pattern of these higher lows then you get the spikes, pull back, and then it goes. So I'm not saying it's going to happen, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I don't know when it's going to happen, but the pattern is there. The chart is setting up. It's holding the full square. You know, we had a couple pushes below it, but look at what happened this last push. Stayed right on the square. Now we're coming up and we're testing the half square. The sellers have been here capping it at this half square. So that's the next battle. But but we're seeing in the last month, you had a low, a higher low, a higher low. Are we going to push through this week? Maybe. The setup's there and the pattern's there. And you can see in things like gold and silver and um, uh, coffee, this is the pattern. This is how it goes. It's, it's how we detect the accumulation. And if they stay on top of the levels that are important, you know, the odds favor that you're going to get that resolution to the upside. And I think sugar is one that's setting up to do that. Um, any observations on sugar you have, Barry? Well, it's, um, no, just, just watching the triangle build up. And, you know, again, it's, it's like, you know, we saw in gold and a lot of the other commodities you know, as it consolidates, building up pressure is winding and uh, looks like this is winding up. I mean, it's the, the upper yeah. half line is very clear. You know, break of that, it's, it should just snap it at least one square up. <laughs> the way That's looks. right. That's right. So, but it's been again, sloppy. I mean, given for sure, it's been it's been a sloppy up move. It's not, uh, you know, it's not some blaring bull market, but but, you know, it, it's pushing up. So, yeah, and this has been a four month chop essentially, right? And that that energy is building up, and it's going to release at some point. And I and just, last time we got that this year, earlier this year, you know, we had a nice run up for a couple of months, and, and uh, that was that yeah. July to August, middle right. of August run, right? So exactly, yeah, I think it looks fine. I think the brackets are perfect. We'll watch it in there. 
Yeah. And the, and the good news is that this is, you know, we, we reviewed a lot of commodities today because a lot of them are starting to move, right? They're breaking out of these consolidations and ready to take the next phase. So it's an exciting time to be in the market. You know, if you have the tools and you have the levels, which you'll have the levels in the spreadsheet, you can uh, you know, tilt the odds in your favor and put yourself in a position where, you know, success is, is possible and, and probable. So mm-hmm. uh, let's see. We, as Barry said, Friday is important from a timing standpoint, not only on the, you know, on the, um, on the squares, but there's, there's some cycles in there too. So it, it should be an exciting week. That's for sure. Exactly. It should be a good week. So rest up this weekend, guys. <laughs> yeah, rest up. Be ready to go Sunday when futures open. And uh, we'll talk with you next week. All right. Good show. Thanks. Thanks, Ben. Take care.